And Philly, come on out here, Philly. There you go. Hi, Philly. How are you? Well, let me see here. <coughs> oh, my favorite. This lovely bird. Does anybody know what you are looking at? You got it. This is Philly, and Philly, of course, is a barn owl. Now, barn owls are dependent on a certain habitat group. Now, many animals depend on the large forests of Canada and the world. Many animals depend on the waterways of the world. Many animals depend on, you know, Arctic tundra. This bird right here depends on none of that habitat. This is a bird that needs grasslands. And what grasslands are is they're basically a wide open space with knee-high to horse sort of almost chest-high grass that is left very wild without trees. And in Canada, a lot of our grasslands have all but disappeared, and that's why this magnificent bird right here is almost all but gone. But they are found worldwide. This is the species that is found in every single continent of the world, except for the Antarctica. So, if you're in Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia, South America, and right here in North America, you have a chance of seeing this bird as long as you're near grasslands. Now, some of you might be looking at this bird going, wait a minute here, I thought that bird was nocturnal. It does most of its hunting at night. It is a nocturnal species, but just like a bat, it can function perfectly well during the daylight hours. But it has a couple of abilities to help it when it's really dark out. Number one, this bird has exceptional eyesight. The problem with eyes though, every set of eyes on this planet, including yours, still needs a little bit of light to function. So if you were to put this bird right here, in a room, no windows, no doors, and you turn it off the lights, this bird would be as blind as we are. It cannot see in full darkness. But on those really dark nights, what would this bird use to find its way? What, this, what, would, it, what would this bird use to guide its... Stars? Well, you know what? If it's really dark out and it can't see, there's no moon out, there's no stars out, what is another very important sense for this bird? And I'll give you a, a clue. Have a look at this bird's face. Do you notice this bird has an exceptionally sort of almost rounded and indented. Her face actually looks somewhat like a satellite. This would be sort of break it down. Ears are the sense this bird relies on more. And we're going to prove this. Come on over here, Billy. There you go. If you look at this bird's face, she has that specialized shape to it. It almost looks like a satellite dish. And I'm going to get you guys to prove it. OK, you ready? The bird has the shape of this face for this reason. So if you guys take both your hands, make little cups for me, one on each side. You stick one hand in behind this here one hand in behind the other ear. Not only do you look like a barn owl when you do that, can you guys hear me a little bit better? I bet you can. And that's why the barn owl has that shape. This bird right here, if we were to turn off the lights in this room, she could hear a mouse on the other side, only using her ears to find it, and she'd be able to pinpoint it and grab it with her feet. That's how accurate her hearing is. Now she has another ability to go along with that hearing. And it's very important to her, when this bird flies through the air, she does not make any sound with her wings. She is a silent flyer. And a lot of people think, even old science books would tell you that owls fly quietly so they can sneak up on their dinner in the middle of the night. That's a really good thought, but it's not the reason why owls have silent flight. Owls have silent flight to help their hearing out. So imagine this, if you're an owl flying through the air and you're trying to listen to your dinner, and you had noisy wings running behind you, you'd be listening to yourself and not your dinner. So these guys have silent flight so they can listen to what's going on. Okay. Oh, Philly. Come on over here, Philly. Oh. There you go. She's going to stand on the corner there. All right. She saw something moving around over there. Let's see if they can... Oh, that's what she saw. She saw Kevin over there with the big snake. All right. Oh, okay. I'm going to see if I can get her attention back here. Come on, oh Philly. Let's see if it. Watch this. We'll see if we can get it right up. Feels pretty good up there, doesn't she? Yeah. Right on the uh, right on the feet. Oh Philly. <laughs> okay. See if I can get it. There we go. Thank you, girl. All right. Now, see this cute little bird right here. You guys want to take a guess on what she eats in a day? This bird has a very fast metabolism. In places where there's agriculture, a lot of people will put up nesting sites for these birds to help out agriculture. See this cute little owl you're looking at? In one day, she eats four mice per day. So imagine mom and dad living on your farm, two of them together. That's eight mice for the pair. And then they raise a beautiful family of five in the summer months. Each young barn owl growing up eats about eight mice per day. 
So if you did the math on a family, that is almost 50 mice per day a family in Barnells would consume. Is that not a lot of mice? And that's why they need that wide open grasslands where all those metal moles and mice are found. Okay, we're going to put beautiful filly away and I'm going to bring out a really cool bird. You guys are going to love this. 